this down and we'll boot up off the uh, alternate installation uh, disk. So the first screen that you'll see is, is very much like the, the first one, uh, except that you have different options. You've got the install in text mode, you've got a text mode install uh, for manufacturers, so if you're building a system and you need to customize it, you can do that. Uh, and then there's an install a command line system, which you don't probably want to do. Um, I think by default the the F4 setting is VGA, which is the generic kind of just whatever monitor there happens to be. As long as there's a monitor, it'll kind of show you. And this is the very basic installer. It's not as pretty as the other one, but believe me, it is, um, it's easy. It's not frightening at all. To navigate, it's the up and down arrow. Hit return to accept something. And uh, those side arrows to select either the yes or the no and things like that. So here it's just asking me to press a key on my keyboard so it can identify that I've got a keyboard hooked up to this computer. And then it asks me if there are certain keys on my keyboard. It's just trying to help me um, help it identify what keyboard I'm using, what system I'm actually using. And you just keep clicking through. I mean, it's it's a really simple install. It's just not as pretty as the other one. But it's basically asking us the same information. And again, the, the right and left arrow for the yes and no uh, return to accept. So now it's detecting the hardware, uh, and so it's looking for the CD-ROM drive first. Found that. Some, it's loading some additional components for the installation. And this is actually a, a fairly quick process itself. There's a lot of auto configuration that it can do. Um, I have this system plugged into a network uh, by an Ethernet cable, so it actually is um, it's doing most of the configuration on its own. Right here, it is simply asking me to uh, name, give the computer a name. Basically, it, it really it's pretty arbitrary. You don't have to give it anything special. Um, don't use spaces or any weird characters. Uh, and again, this is the partitioning um, portion of it. And again, I think that for an ex-Ubuntu system, since you're probably doing it on an older machine, you probably don't... you're probably not really going to be partitioning a disk. You're probably doing this to resurrect a machine, uh, not use ex-Ubuntu in conjunction with another operating system. At least that's how it's been f in my case lately. Uh, but if you do need to partition a fancier math, uh, a fancier partitioning table, um, you can watch a previous one of the previous screencasts on partitioning, and that'll explain all that kind of stuff. Time zone selection. Choose your time zone. This is the time zone selection. You can choose whatever time zone you're in. This is where we're setting up our username and the password. So do this carefully. This is this is your username and your password, so you want it to be good and you want to remember it. And uh, this is the beginning of the installation. This is what it'll do for the next uh, couple of minutes. And I think I'm going to uh, magically make this happen faster than it really would. And uh, now it's finished, magically. And so I'm going to go ahead and press continue. 
finishing up. It's going to eject the uh, disk for me, and I'll take that before I restart. And once I've restarted, uh, my new login screen is this. Now, this may look a little bit scary to you because, well, there's no graphic interface yet. And to get a graphic interface, you typically would type start X. But as you can see, it can't start X yet because it doesn't know what X is. Um, getting all these components is very easy. It's just text. And you can certainly do this. Watch this screencast while you're setting up your system, and it'll be very easy. The first thing you'll want to get is the desktop environment itself. So you type in sudo, S-U-D-O, apt get install xfce4. So that's S-U-D-O space apt dash get space install space xfce, the number 4. And that will uh, attempt to download it from uh, the repository. Now the problem is right now that um, the repository that it thinks it needs uh, is your CD-ROM. But the CD-ROM that we obtained uh, doesn't have the repository, the, the information that we need on it. So what we can do is type in this code, which will change our directory to a folder called etsy um, slash apt. We can go into apt, and then we can type in this command, sudo pico source.list and that takes us into a little text editor it's very easy to understand you just kind of arrow down about one two three four lines and add um, a hash symbol or a pound symbol right in front of this line that says cd-rom and once you've done that um, there's not really anything else in here that needs to be done everything else is okay Everything with a hash mark, everything with a hash symbol in front of it is a comment. Um, and those commands down at the bottom with all the highlighted uh, letters, those are the different commands that we can use in this little text editor. So to, to save this, it's called write out. So you hit the control key and the O key. So just hit control O and that will ask us if we want to um, to save it back to our disk. Uh, you press return and then you hit control X to get out uh, to exit. And now we can type in sudo apt get install xfce4 and now that's looking uh, online via my ethernet cable and in the internet um, for the xfce desktop environment and it does it all for you. I mean, it's just, it's that simple. So if you're not afraid to do a little bit of typing, um, this process is fairly painless. Okay, so it's installed that, so now we're going to sudo apt get install xorg. That's x-o-r-g, all one word. Okay, so once it's installed, it will bring up a configuration menu for us. And up at the top are the very, very high resolution for really new monitors and new graphic cards and way down at the bottom are the ones that we're probably looking at I happen to know this computer pretty well and I know that the 1024 by 768 resolution is not going to happen on it uh, the 800 by 600 I definitely know works 640 by 480 I know works I'll hit the right arrow to get over into my OK and I'll press OK or return rather and now I need to set up um, some preferences uh, in regards to our video display to really help this along. So I'm going to change directory into my slash etsy slash x11 directory. And uh, that's actually a capital X. And now I'm going to sudo pico, that's p-i-c-o, x-o-r-g dot conf. And now we're in this text editor again. And again, it's really easy to navigate through. You can press the down arrow to go line by line, or control V to do sort of a page down kind of thing. And what we're looking for is a section uh, where it lists all the resolutions and bit depths for our screen. Um, there's a lot of information in this file, um, but the one that we're really 
interested in right here is default depth and see how it's in section screen uh, it's identifying that as the default screen the default depth is 24 I've had a lot of problems with that in the past so I go ahead and set it to 16 um, and that typically really ensures that I get the graphic um, user interface the GUI up and running uh, really quickly because I just find that on certain older monitors a, a bit depth of 24 is just too too much for it and it won't work so control O to save that control X to get out of it and I'm gonna clear the screen and now if I hit start X this is the first thing I see and this is our graphic user interface so as you can see it's a little bit more dumbed down than what we got on the um, the other CD but it's all very customizable and the first place to start is up here in the corner that's our little that's the the bar that we can create into um, into more of what it looked like on the other CD well, you can position it anywhere you like um, on certain on a lot of XFC desktop